Hi, I'm Jeremy Cato, and this is CatoCarGuy.com. Thanks for watching, and if you have not already subscribed, please do. Let me give you the thumbnail of the 2024 Mazda CX-90. It's quick off the line, the handling is sporty, the ride is comfortable, the equipment is excellent. The equipment level on this $56,000, as you see, tested SUV is really good, but most of all, it's the cabin. This has one of the most beautiful cabins I've seen in a long time, and that includes vehicles twice or three times the price. Those who follow Mazda, well, you'll know that the CX-90 is the replacement for the CX-9. And this is just the start of a whole line of CX-90s. And we know this because, well, the powertrain here is pretty basic, a 3.3 liter inline six with a mild hybrid system that offers a little bit of a bump in fuel economy, but it's not a big deal. What we're waiting to see though is the hybrid version of this, the plug-in hybrid version of, and will there be a full EV battery vehicle that carries the CX-90 badge? The rear doors here are a family-friendly feature. Let me show you. Look how wide this opens. If you are installing child seats back here, well, you're not going to be banging into the door, are you? Let me just touch on some of the standard equipment. Yes, that center display is 10.25 inches. And there's a 7-inch digital gauge display as well. The 10-way power seats for the driver, terrific, and it has lumbar support. And there is an 8-way power passenger seat with lumbar support. They're heated, and in this tester, they're cooled. The Bose Premium Audio System is fantastic, and it has 12 speakers beautifully arranged throughout. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard, and there is a wireless phone charging dock. The three-zone automatic climate control, I like it a lot. And you will find plenty of USB Type-C ports. I should also tell you that the cargo space and the third row seating, well, in this rig, those both are a little bit tighter than you'll find in key competitors. None of those competitors, though, have the interior that you see inside this rig, this tester. It's gorgeous. Let's have a look. Yes, a cream interior is going to take a lot of work to keep clean and shiny and looking new, but I think it's worth it. Look at the mixture of textures and details, the stitching on the dashboard, the wood inlays. The CX-90 is offered in six and eight passenger configurations and a variety of trim levels. What you see here is also functional. There's a good variety of physical buttons for the many major functions and they're all labeled so you can easily find them and use them. I like the driving position. It's comfortable. The seats are pretty good and the rest of its interior, the controls, well, they're just all beautifully laid out. My only downside here is this screen. The touchscreen is still slightly undersized. On the plus side, well, it's right in your eye line, and the horizontal layout gives you enough information that you can live with it. On long road trips, you will enjoy the buckets up front. They are comfortable and well padded. The captain chairs in the back seat of my tester not so great. I would rate them at best average. And the third row, well, unless you're a very tiny person, you will not find it a particularly comfortable place. Mazda has long tried to offer more style functionality, luxurious features, and great ride and handling than some of its competitors like the Kia Telluride or the Volkswagen Atlas. You might also want to crush up the Honda Pilot, Hyundai Palisade, and Toyota Highlander. And I particularly like the Highlander because it has an exceptionally effective hybrid drive system. So if fuel economy is a big deal for you, that is a rig you definitely want to cross shop. If you're the driver on a road trip, well, you will like the adaptive cruise, the lane keeping assistance, and the blind spot warning system, and many of the other safety functions as well. Yeah. The safety features here are competitive with the best in class, but I am particularly thrilled to report that the adaptive cruise control is one of the best I've encountered. The powertrain here is nothing groundbreaking, but I do like the eight-speed automatic transmission. The shifts are crisp and sharp, and they come at exactly the right time with no muss, 
no fuss. Still, the CX-90 here gets pretty darn good fuel economy given that it has only a very, very basic hybrid drive system. This rig may look big and cumbersome, but it's not. The ride is stable, it takes a corner very well, the steering is tight, and the brakes are very responsive. All in all, a good example of Mazda's commitment to ride quality, to responsiveness, and to making the driver live an experience they really enjoy. I'm sure you can tell that I'm a fan of this CX-90, and why wouldn't I be? The interior is gorgeous, the exterior is perfectly fine. The ride, handling, the composure of this rig on the road, terrific. Power is okay. On a downside, while well, I think that screen is too small, the cabin is a bit tighter than its rivals, and storage spaces, well, they're not as varied as many competitors. Fuel economy is good, but what we're waiting for next is a solid electrification strategy for the whole CX-90 lineup. That means a better hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, and one day, we may even see a full electric CX-90. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy Cato. This is CatoCarGuy.com. We'll see you next time.